Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is the next installment in my 10 Heroes 1-0 series. And we're finally getting around to doing Chanel. So if you are interested in hearing my top 10 products from Chanel and one to avoid at all costs, keep watching. So I must first apologize for the delay in getting around to covering Chanel because it was like the most highly requested brand and it's taken me a while to get here to record this video and I'll explain why. When I went to look at like my Chanel collection and what my favorite products were and what I wanted to put in like my top 10, I found that like so many of the products that I absolutely love from the brand are no longer available, that like, they're limited edition and they are no longer able to get our hands on them. And I just didn't want to include too many products that you guys couldn't get because that's annoying and what is the point? So I made it my mission to go out and try a lot more Chanel products and try new permanent things that I haven't tried before and find a more solid, easy to obtain permanent range of products to share with you in my top 10. And now I feel like we're there. I feel like I've found my 10 hero products that are actually around and available to get for now. And so I'm ready, I'm ready to share them with you. So let's get started with the foundations. These are my top two foundations from Chanel. Chanel have a lot of foundation formulas. I didn't know if you've noticed, but they just have foundations coming out their ears willy-nilly over there. Perhaps my favorite of all is the number one Chanel. Let's not beat around the bush. It is my favorite, okay? It's right there on the bottle. It says number one. This epitomizes Chanel skin and complexion for me, this foundation. It's so refined, natural, beautiful, subtle, very pretty and effective, but in a really subtle, understated way. That's what this foundation is to me. I love this bottle, it's beautiful, but again, classic and understated, and it's not, you know, covered in a load of writing. It's very simple, and I think it's quite a simple foundation as well. This gives me like a light, buildable with a quite a bit of product to medium coverage. It is a luminous foundation. This is on my skin right now, by the way. This is why I'm, I'm showing you it like this. It's natural and healthy and it has life to the skin, but it's not like shiny, glowy, luminous. It's just got a soft, glow to the skin. It's very understated. That is kind of the word of the day. Natural and skin-like, no SPF, so it photographs really beautiful. But the main thing about this foundation is it's so smooth and flattering, especially on texture, on lines and wrinkles and pores and things like that. It's very flattering, very smoothing, very perfecting. And it looks like set, even though it's not, and it doesn't really need to be for my skin type. It's a beautiful foundation. I really, really enjoy this one like that made it into like my top few foundations very very quickly my second favorite foundation from chanel is the le beige healthy glow hydration and long wear this is definitely a glowier finish than the number one but still not like dewy it's still that sort of healthy glow healthy luminosity skin like radiance very fresh looking on the skin this is not quite as smoothing and refined as the number one it's a fresher healthier daytime glow really has a lot more coverage straight off the bat than the number one this one it's like a light natural coverage initially it takes quite a bit of building it never gets heavy and cakey though i can get this to a medium coverage without it looking like i work to do that this one is like a medium straight off the bat definitely a bit more glow definitely not as long wearing as the number one i wouldn't say either of these are long wearing this one will get to sort of seven or eight hours this one will be like more like six unless you set it so if you're looking for a long wearing foundation this isn't going to be the one but again no spf photographs beautifully gives you a glowier natural lifelike skin quality than the number one. So it really depends, one on the occasion, one what you're looking for, if you want more glow, more coverage, if you want more natural, soft, subtle luminosity that's gonna wear a little bit better, then I'd go for this one. Both beautiful foundations and my favorites that I've tried 
from the brand. Next up, one of the products that I spoke about that I went hunting for, hunting and trying to seek out a bronzer that I love from Chanel, and this is the one. This is the Le Beige Healthy Glow Luminous Color in the shade Medium Deep. This is a very soft, subtle, natural bronzer on me, on my skin tone. It's warm, it's not too, too warm. It has a lot of luminosity through it. It's like the finest, finest micro shimmer in there. And when buffed onto the skin, onto the cheeks, it just gives glow. Do you see how luminous and pretty that is, but it's not shimmery or glittery? It's just so beautiful. As you can see, a very subtle bronze, something that I like to use when I wanna be super natural and I just want my blush to pop. I don't want to be super bronzed. I just want a hint of bronze, kind of give me some dimension to the skin, but I don't want it like overwhelm my blush. I don't wanna look super bronzy today. This is like the most natural bronzer that I own. Very, very pretty, a really nice texture, really melts into the skin, very soft and subtle again, very classic Chanel beautiful packaging. It really builds beautifully and it blends itself. Very, very soft, buttery formula. And permanent, probably the only permanent flipping bronzer that I could find from Chanel. Like I feel like they need more bronzers, okay? There's not enough shades and there's not enough that are easy to get your mitts on. I would have included the original Soleil Tande Chanel, but I don't love the new reformulated version, but the original would have been in here. But again, I didn't want to include it because you can't get it anymore and I don't love the new formula so that's now my favorite Chanel bronzer. Next let's cover the first of my two favorite lip products. Again Chanel have a lot of lip formulas, a lot, a lot of lip formulas. I'm actually wearing one of the Allures, which is not in my top 10, but is a lip formula that I love still. But probably my favorite, no, 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 it can't be. It's my second favorite lip formula from Chanel. It's the Rouge Coco Bloom. This is the shade 110. For me, this formula, it's, it's the color payoff and the shine. Like the amount of shine in this formula and the amount of pigment like right off the bat is amazing. I didn't expect it and I love it. They're so nice, comfortable, hydrating, but that pigmentation, like one swipe pigmentation with the shine of a gloss, but it's not sticky, it feels really nice on the lips, is amazing. I wish they made more shades in this one. I feel like they really need to expand their shade range in this lipstick because the formula is amazing and I love the packaging with like the clear lid so you can see which shade is in there without having to look the name on the bottom. I love that absolutely banging, belting formula. We need more shades. Next, let's talk about a product that is limited edition but is still available. So I did include it because I felt like I had to, because especially if you can still get your mitts on this one, then you should do that because I'm sure it will be gone soon. But this is the Rev de Camellia highlight. Mine, I mean, there's not a lot of point, maybe I could give you a close up, but it's very well used, very well loved. So the flower does not look how Chanel intended. <laughs> But you know, this is the reality of these embossings once you are, have got some use out of them, I guess. Again, this is the highlight that I have on today and I absolutely love it. It's perfection for me. It's like really quite a high shine, but because it has like no sort of base color to it. It's literally just shine with very little base, which means I can use this summer and winter and it just gives me such a healthy glow and shine without leaving a cast on the skin and it just literally looks like your skin is just super hydrated. Like it looks like wet glow, shine. It's so pretty and reflective, but not chunky. It doesn't exaggerate texture. This is a very special highlighter for me. It is quite different to lots of other highlighters because it doesn't have that sort of overwhelming color to it that means lots of people, that it's not gonna work on their skin tone, it's gonna to be too light or too dark. With a light hand, a lot of people are going to be able to use this and still get quite a subtle, melted into the skin luminosity because of the very little base in it. It's so beautiful, so pretty, but it's still, again, it sticks to that refined, understated quality. It's not like loud shimmer or glitter. Oh, no, 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 no. 
It's smooth luminosity, of course. It's Chanel, okay, what did you expect? Next up, I want to talk about a product I've had for ages that I feel is an underrated one for the brand. This is Chanel's Cream Eyeshadow Singles, and this is the shade Patine Bronze. So this I've had for ages, and I was in a hunt for like a single cream eyeshadow that would be like this exact color. I wanted a bronzy, one and done single eyeshadow that wasn't gonna crease, that was going to be a really nice creamy formula that was going to set and not be tricky to work with, that I could travel with, etc., etc. And that is when I discovered these shadows. It's so pretty and smooth and I literally don't have to do anything different. There's no need to like treat this as a cream. It's literally feels, performs, works like a powder, very easy to work with, beautifully smooth, beautifully smooth, does not crease. In fact, I just don't think it can crease because of the formula. It's so smooth and it's not that it's dry, but it does not feel like a cream. It feels like that sort of gel powder type of consistency that could be a powder, could be cream, who knows what it is, but it performs gorgeously. And it's just such a beautiful shade as well. High shine, but again, quite sophisticated, perfect one and done for like the office for every day. Beautiful. And I feel like no one talks about those. What, what, what am I missing? What's going on here? Why does no one talk about these? Because I think they're amazing. Like one of, if not the best cream eyeshadow formula I've tried. So what's, what's the deal? Now a Chanel favorites video, would not be a Chanel favorites video unless we spoke about their blushes. Because again, a product that Chanel is like known for their gorgeous, beautiful blushes. Now, I don't know, I feel like apparently something has happened in America to Chanel's blushes. They've been reformulated and they're not this baked formula anymore. Is that correct? Please someone tell me what's going on. Because I was waiting for that to happen over here, having heard what was going on in the US. And it's just never happened. We still have the regular classic Chanel formulas. This is the shade Elegance, by the way, and it is the blush I have on my lips. Oh my, <laughs> what? It's the shade I have on my cheeks is where blush goes, okay? And it's without question my favorite Chanel blush, but one of my favorite blushes of life. This has been around for so, so long. It's still for me like the ultimate natural classic blush. It just is so understated and pretty and beautiful and natural. The finish of these blushes is just stunning. So much luminosity and life without being like shimmery or glittery again, something that I feel like Chanel really nails these finishes. This really does make me feel elegant. A blush that makes you feel elegant, I mean, what? But it just does. It's never going to fight with anything. It's so natural and understated and muted, but pretty. And I feel like it's just the perfect everyday inoffensive blush. Never fight with your lip color or your eyeshadow. You can't go wrong. It's unless, like with a lot of Chanel products, I am like now, I'm in my sort of more tanned summer skin tone. I'm using, so today I have on B50 in the Chanel foundation, and this is about the limit of what this blush can do. So I had to build this up and it's very, very natural and subtle, which is how, you know, the blush is intended to be. Any deeper than like a B50 in the Chanel sh shade range, what's the words? That need to come out any deeper than like a medium medium tan and it's not going to show up on you I feel like there are deeper shades but I do feel like Chanel with all of their cheek products could have more deeper offerings in there especially with bronzers and highlights I would say so yes it's not going to show up on you if you're much deeper than my current skin tone but for me it's the ultimate natural blush of course if you have a fair light medium skin it will be more impactful for me it's the ultimate natural something when I want to wear blush but I don't want a pop of color I don't want my blush to overwhelm or be like the thing of my makeup it's just stunning, timeless, 
elegance. Next, let's talk about the newest addition to my Chanel collection, an instant highlight, an instant favorite. It's the new Noir Allure Mascara. I've got it on my eyelashes. Where does this go? My eyelashes today. And let me tell you, I did not expect to like this. I thought this was going to be like an instant fail because I like big, fat, dramatic lashes. And I did not think Chanel had that in them. You know, Chanel is the brand of subtle sophistication, understated beauty. I did not think they were going to bring out a mascara. That was this dramatic, okay. I did not see this coming. This is such a good mascara. I love everything about the component. I talked about this click up. I just am obsessed, I love that. I love the wand here, it's so thin, you can get really close to the root of your lashes, it coats every lash, it's very quick to get a dramatic lifted lash and that fanned out lash that this mascara promised, it's so pretty and although it is dramatic, I feel like it still has that Chanel quality that it's not sort of fat and in your face drama. It's still this pretty lifted, long fluttery drama, which while it's a dramatic mascara, it still has that little Chanel touch that makes it a little more refined than some other mascaras that give you drama in like a different way. Just such a good mascara though. And next let's talk about one of the new limited edition, yes, but very newly released tweed quads. So this is probably the hardest or the only product that really should be hard to find out of the products I've spoken about today, depending on when this goes up and when you're watching it as to how long these stuck around for, that is in the future. So I cannot predict, but I hope that you are able to get your hands on this if um, you're watching this around the time that these are released. So this is shade number four. This is Tweed Bron et Rose, and this is my favorite of the tweed quads. I got all four of them, and there is a video showing you all four on the eyes, but this is my favorite because it's just the most different. For me, it's cooler, it's a bit more sort of popping and a bit more impactful. I feel like it's got a really nice balance of formulas and color in here that gives you shade and light, gives you day and night, gives you some sort of satins as well as some shimmers and it gives you a completed cohesive look, which some of the others I feel like don't do that so well. But this cooler color story for me is definitely my pick of the bunch. You know, typical to the brand, Chanel's eyeshadows are very, again, understated, subtle, soft on the eye. They don't give you that Pat McGrath impact, that shimmer, that shine, that over the top, sparkle. They are more refined, more soft, more understated. They are pretty, um, but not in an over-the-top way. Very Chanel, and they kind of stick to that formula. This is one of the best that I have seen color story-wise. The formula is beautiful, very smooth, soft, easy to work with, easy to build up, but this one in particular is actually quite versatile, and I really, really enjoy how sort of classy and pretty it looks on the eye. I feel like there's something quite unique and special about this particular color story in the Tweed collection. I've really, really loved it. Definitely my favorite Chanel eyeshadow quad that I have tried. And lastly for the heroes, but by no means leastly, the Double Tenue lipsticks. These are frankly miraculous, magical. I've been recently seeing all this hype about the new House Labs um, lip lacquer that is like a shiny lipstick that doesn't transfer and everyone's lost their minds about it. And I, all I can think is, uh, hello, <laughs> Chanel have been doing this for years, okay? So this, if you don't know, is a double-ended lipstick. You have lipstick color on one side and what you do is you apply this lipstick like a liquid lipstick like you typically would. This is the shade Intense Caramel and this is probably my favorite sort of go-to nude in this formula. Then you allow that to sort of dry until it's tacky and then on this end you have this gloss which you apply over the top and it basically seals the lipstick and you see this shine now, it stays like that. It stays like a gloss that doesn't transfer. Okay, it's a madness, it's an insanity, it's an impossibility. 
you would think. I went for dinner with my friends recently and I was wearing a bright, I think it was bright raspberry perhaps, the colour in this, and um, everyone was commenting and saying, oh, I love your lipstick, it's so pretty, and I was like showing them, oh, wait till you see this and doing a kiss test and there's no transfer. And let me tell you, these women lost their minds. They were shook to their core. Everybody was taking a photo of it, writing it down. What is this lipstick? What is this lipstick? That allows you to have a glossy, shiny lip that isn't gonna come off throughout a meal or transfer all over everything. What are you talking about? How can it be? I don't know, is what I'm saying, but it's incredible. My fear, here's the thing, I fear deep in my core that this is being discontinued and I'll tell you why. It's been out of stock for forever. You can barely get your hands on this and if you can there's only a couple of shades available and that's everywhere this is stocked from the Chanel website to all of the stockists that stock Chanel. These are out of stock everywhere in almost every colour and it's making me feel nervous, okay? This is typically how things go when something is being discontinued or like Chanel love to do reformulated and rarely for the better, okay? When Chanel reformulate things, it doesn't often improve the product. Remember the blushes in America. Remember the Soleil Tan de Chanel bronzer. I pray this is not the case and that they've just sold out because everyone's just cottoned on to how amazing they are and they just need to restock. Please restock, because there's several shades that I still need. Please don't discontinue this, I'll cry, okay? And I don't like to cry, especially not over lipstick, but I will do it. Okay, so those are my top 10 favorite products from Chanel that are hopefully all currently available as I speak. Let's move on to the zero. The one product I would recommend you avoid, you treat with caution, you save your money, you pick this last. If you want to buy every product from Chanel, this should be the last one on your list. My least favourite of all the products. And it is the Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. This stuff is very, very expensive and I find it to be useless frankly. Well, I don't, let's not say useless. That seems harsh. Let's just say it just is really not giving me enough for me to say, to recommend this. There's 20 mil in here, which is an outrage. Okay. That is outrageous. 20 mils for like a million pounds. And then it's this weird, like, moussey stuff. And the shade range is like really bad, which is why I picked up one that was much too dark for me. But even so, it's just really giving me nothing. It's giving me really not a lot. I find it really enhanced. I mean, you can see I haven't used this for a while and it's really like balling up and clumping up. And it's not like it's, you know, a year old. It's only a few months old, but it seems like it's kind of already expiring a little bit. But this essentially is like a really sheer, like, wash of nothing and I just feel like it really does not a lot to the skin for you to pay such a hefty price tag for such a small amount of product like you want it to be like amazing like I really thought this was going to give me the most beautiful skin of my life but it really doesn't do a lot for me it just is like a hint of something and it then it doesn't wear well and it transfers like I've never known anything transfer as badly as this like I spoke about how I was playing with my kids and literally this was all over them and had like like gone off of my face. It does not wear well, it transfers everywhere. It's not really giving you much to start off with. And I find it really unfriendly to like texture and lines. So all in all, this is like, yeah, get in the bin and stay there. I didn't like it, I wasn't a fan. I hope that was clear. So there you have it. Those are my 10 Heroes 1-0. Finally, we got round to doing this for Chanel. Please let me know. I'm still, not that I'm new to the brand, but I feel like it's definitely a brand that I have less experience with than I do a lot of other brands. So please let me know, what should I try next? What do you recommend that I try from the brand? What must I try? What am I missing out on? What are your favorites from the brand? Please let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.